Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Park. Today we're talking cases, case inserts. I have a suggested improvement for the Steady Grip, which could make it an even better tool for photographers, and we'll be using the Q500 4K camera in a way that you might not have thought of yet. That's all coming up right now on Videos by Andy. Now, I'll get to all the promised products in just a moment, but first let me show you something. Today we're doing a two-camera shoot. Right now I'm looking straight into the lens of my Panasonic Lumix GH4. That's a camera that I typically use when I'm shooting my videos. But now, let's cut to camera two. And we're going to go over here and guess which camera this is. This is the Seiko 3. This is the camera, and it's, as you can see, I'll do a cutaway shot here so you can see how I'm doing this. I have my Q500 4K mounted on a step ladder here, and I use my ST10 controller to do the framing. We're just going to see how it works in this. Now, no way am I expecting the image that comes from this camera to look as good as it does out of this camera. Heck, the price of this camera alone costs more than the copter and this camera and the case and the batteries and the steady grip all combined. Okay, let's talk cases. As you know, right here, this is the Typhoon case. You know, this is the one that was included with the price of our copter. It's a good case. Is it a great case? No. It's good for some things. Now, let me tell you what it's good for. If you want to put it in the back of your car, in the trunk, or the back seat, or hollow it around, it's lightweight. It only weighs 10 pounds empty, just a couple pounds more with the copter. You know, it's pretty good for that. But if you want to ship it, no, this case is probably not going to hold up. Here's a link to a video below where just last week I shipped my copter to Las Vegas and what I did, I saved the exterior packaging as well as the corner pieces and everything and I shipped it. Hey, everything arrived well, it did well. Would I ship this case alone and just put some tape or a band around it? No, I don't think it'll hold up. I think it'll beaten up. It's not that sturdy. For its intended use, it's great. So what I was seeking was a case that I could ship on an airline. Now I know that this case will not fit in the overhead bin. If it did, it would be ideal for that purpose. But I wanted to get one I could ship as baggage. Now, I'd love to try it with this. I just don't want to, you know, suffer the outcome on it. I just don't think it work. I mean, it's a good case. It's just not designed for that. So I went shopping around. I've had good luck with Pelican cases before, and it end, I ended up with this one right here, the Pelican 1650. Oops. That's the wrong case. Ah, now here we go. This is the Pelican 1650. Now I ordered this online. I was pretty confident with the quality I was going to get because it's a Pelican. I've ordered Pelican cases before. I've used them. Never an issue. This is, they say waterproof. Let's say water resistant. I think putting my Q500 4K and a lot of accessories in here will be no problem. Now, when I ordered it, let me open it up here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven latches. And this thing is a pressurized case too. You open it up, it has the foam here. Now I paid, and I think this was like an, an extra $40 or so. This is, and I haven't even taken out the plastic yet, a place to put wires and cables and things that can replace this area right here. Kind of good for the little knickknacks we had. You know, we'll see what can go in there. Now this has you know, the pluck and pick, I think that's what they call it, foam. Here, I know you can't see it from that angle. i tell you what, let's do this. Let me show this to the Q500 or the Seiko 3 camera. Let's see if you can see this. Now, you notice how you can just pluck the pieces out. I'm not going to take it out yet because I'm going to save this for later. Let's look at it on the GH4 camera. You see how this works. This has pieces that are cut to depth. You take it out and you can sculpt this to fit your needs. Well, I'm going to save this for future usage. And what, what I did, I went online and, well, I've never bought from this company. They have a great reputation from what I read online. I ordered a custom case insert for this from Aces Deals. And let me tell you, it arrived quick. Now, it's expensive. And let me tell you what I mean by that. This whole Pelican case with the pluck foam, not including this. We'll take that out of the picture. Here, I'll throw that out of here. This is $250, and that was the delivered price from Amazon. Now, the insert that I'm going to show you in a moment from Aces Steels, 
that alone is $150. Now, I realize it's a custom cut case, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna check it out right now, and let's hope that my only complaint's the price. Peter was a pleasure to deal with, and it's nice. You know, there's not that many Q500s out there. It's nice knowing that there are accessories that we can buy that are specific to our copter and keep me from plucking away all this stuff and having to order another one because I messed it up. Okay, let's go to camera two and cut over to the Seago 3. What we're gonna do now, let's go on and let me show you how easy it is to change the inserts. Here, the top piece. I don't know if Peter's unit includes that, so we'll keep that in here for a minute. This is two pieces here. Here, I'll show this to the Lumix, you've seen that. We'll put this over to the side. Now, let's go over, there's a bottom section here. This way you can do two tiers in here and also have a cushion on the lower. Paperwork's still in here. We'll move that out. It's not adhesed at all. Now, there is one more layer in here. Now, I don't know if we're gonna need this with the Aces Deals insert, but we're about to find out, and again, we'll have this here if needed. Let me go get his pieces and we'll put them in the box. Now, as you can see, I've unsealed the carton, but I have yet to open it up yet. So let's open it up. Now, first thing I notice is, hey, Peter, you put the tape over the plastic. Okay, we got that. Hey, that's, a, that's not a bad thing. I'm just, I'm just whining. Here, let me put this on the ground. We'll lift it out. And let's see what we have here. Again, I just saw the photos online. Ah, it does come with that top piece. So let's go ahead and pull this off. Now, he has two units, one that goes with the Husky case and the other that goes with the Pelican 1650. I specifically ordered the 1650. And let's go on and put this in. It fits well. Now, he had a note on his side about using hot glue to secure it. When I went and Peter called me afterwards and I asked him about that, he said, you know, that's only for the Husky case. You don't need to do it. This is cut to fit perfectly. Now we have the top piece that he included. And that's here. Now, uh, let's see what else we have in the bag. We have his card. I'm assuming it is, I haven't seen it yet. In the bottom of the plastic bag. Yep, it's got his phone number, web address, all that right there. Now we'll get this box out of the way. Now, I'm gonna tell you my first impressions of this. This top part, the egg crate, and this bottom part, the insert, are two different materials. I know the Pelican case I've gotten before that are cut for my cameras. These are the same type. This is a harder foam, a more dense foam, pretty much cheaper foam than this. But I guess you, you know, I'm not an expert in this, but I'm assuming you need something, you know, to cut it out. Now, what I'm gonna do, and okay, Seago 3 camera, it's time to put you to sleep right now because I'm going to put you in here. So we'll cut this camera off and work directly on the Lumix. You know, I have no idea how it's going to work integrating the footage from the Seago 3 camera into the Lumix GH4 footage, but I guess we're about to find out. We're going to put that one down so we can put it in here to see how everything fits. Okay, I'm back. We have the gimbal clamp on the Q500. Over here, that's Lucy. Come here, Lucy, let's say hello to everybody. Okay. I mean, I figure you might hear her barking in this video or other videos. This is Lucy, say hi, shake. Hey, okay, Lucy. Okay, Lucy, I have work to do. I gotta pay for some dog food for you. Only the best, grain-free diet for my girl here. Okay, I'm just looking at this and I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's Lucy. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to relocate the camera, look down, so you won't see me for a little bit. We're just going to look at the unit here and try to figure this out together. I'm a little confused. Fine. Now, hopefully, at this angle, you can see the difference in material. See, that's harder, that's softer. Now, let me show you what I'm faced with right here, and let me tilt this up so you can see it. First, it's a very snug fit. If I wanted to pull this out now, it's going to take some effort. Okay, now, let me show you something right here, and again, this is, let's hope we can see this in the sun. Notice how this is higher than this. Now, you know the most sensitive area on the copter is the gimbal. So I would assume that the gimbal would dangle. So let me put the gimbal clamp on here. It popped off just a moment ago. Okay, 
Now, I would assume, just by looking at this, that it would go in here, but it doesn't. The way that the skids are cut, or maybe it does, let me see. No, the way it's cut, it doesn't come down. That's as far as it can go. So let me flip this around here, and let me see if there's a stop, because I know the one thing we don't want is the gimbal to hit the ground. Now, I don't know if this is just supposed to float up like this or go down. I'm guessing that, you know, with no instructions included or telling you the proper way to mount this, no, and it's popping the gimbal clamp off. So far, I'm not real thrilled with this. You know, for 150 bucks, put an instruction sheet in. Okay. No, it's just, let me try this. Maybe it's just off a little bit. Try to form this around here. No. Guess what? I don't think we have a winner here. This thing just does not look here. If I close it like that, it would secure down. But this just doesn't look like something that was truly custom fit for this copter. Let me try this one more time again this way. Because this is the way I would, logically you would think that the back would stop beforehand, but no, these pieces are just not going to allow. Just so I show that I don't give up. Okay, let's go to a wide shot. Okay, guys, this is a head scratcher to me. I, it's, this is just not working. Now, I notice there's places to put four batteries in here. You can put your props in here. Got to place your controller. I guess this is the place for the charger. You know, other than that, it's got the space I need, but this is a mystery to me. And I'm sorry, but I'm just not going to put my copter at risk. So I have a trip coming up to Colorado in just a few days. Let's see if Peter has a solution for this. Now, let's go on and get on with the rest of the video. Okay, I'm back, and as promised, let's talk about a suggested improvement. And I'm curious on your opinion on this, on the steady grip. Now, we all know that there's a new one coming out. I showed it to you at Enerdrone that is going to have a rechargeable battery. It's not backwards compatible, but it's going to be a new model. You know, it had a little bit different feel to it. When I saw it, it felt good. I'm looking forward to playing with it. One thing I'd like to see is on the bottom somewhere or somehow have a way where you can attach this to a standard camera threaded screw. So it could go onto a tripod so that you could use it as a second camera, similarly to what you saw earlier in this video, as well as using the literally thousands and thousands of stock camera mounts that are out there. That way you could mount this onto something, and whether it's in your car or on a dash or whatever, and in this way you would have the benefit of having the gimbal. Okay, that's just my two cents for today. I'll be contacting Peter on this. I'm sure there's a good solution. We interrupt this video for a special update. Here's the gadget guru, Andy Farr. Okay, that was me. I was attempting to do a, evidently a pretty lame imitation of the late and great Walter Cronkite. If you don't know who he is, Google it. Cronkite is spelled with a C. Okay, I have an update for you. Now, let's face it, I was getting pretty aggravated when I was doing the uh, video because as you know I just have a couple of days and I have a big Colorado trip planned and I've never flown in the Rocky Mountains. I live in the flatlands of Florida. This is going to be a big thing for me and I realized that we were going to do some tests at lower altitudes and higher altitudes to, to see what you can and can't do with this copter and in which mode. Well when I, as soon as I got finished the video and turned the camera off, I went to email, I emailed Peter at Aces Deals. I got on the phone and I left him a voicemail. And within an hour, I heard back from him. And let me say this right up front and very clearly. What so many people have said, that Peter really delivers good customer support. I'm going to underline that. He does. I heard from him. He listened to me. Now, while he disagreed with me up front and thought that I was wrong, and he said, no, it's me, it's not it, he checked. He went in the service department and he pulled out a Q500 4K, went and opened up one of these in the back. He put it in and found out that I was telling the truth here. Now, what he did, he offered me immediately, what we're gonna do, he said he's gonna send me a mailing label, send it back, he'll give me a full refund, and he said, or if I wanna keep this, I can keep it, he'll, he'll credit me back 50%, and I can try to cut it out and see if it works. Well, I explained to him, I'm not a crafty guy, I'm just gonna return it. Well, he then later followed up with an email. And he said he's, he's going to, to issue an immediate credit for the full purchase. And he said, if I want to keep it, he really doesn't need it back, evidently. Uh, and I didn't ask for it back. I sent, sent him a note to say, no, I'm going to return it. 
He said, I can keep it and attempt to mod it myself. Well, I think what I'm going to try to do is to take the pick and pluck foam out of the uh, foam that came with the Pelican case and see if I can make it work. But I do have an alternative plan. And, and uh, I think I found a way to punt, change the game plan. Let me think of some more puns. I'm going to turn lemons into lemonade. And I think I found a way to fly the Rocky Mountains and a different copter, so you're going to have to stay tuned for that. But first, let me say one last thing, and I'm going to put on my editorial hat. Okay. It's not an editorial hat, it's an Aston Martin hat. And by the way, if you want to see a really cool video of an Aston Martin shot with the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, just click right here. And then don't forget to return to this video later or come back here and click it. Okay, editorial hat is on now. Now, what did, what did I learn from this? I learned one thing. Unique is a relatively young company. And the vendors that are just coming online now to create uh, accessories, they're doing their best to do a good job. But whether it's with Unique or DJI or whoever, if you are the vendor and you're going to be bringing aftermarket products for us to sell, and we know it's, you know, it's, it's expensive to keep a business up and running, and we're probably making a higher percentage of profit on the accessories than you are the actual hardware itself. It's, it's the way things work, and I understand that. But just do us all a favor. When you get something in, before you ship the first one, pull one out of inventory, check it out, make sure it works, because it's not just you. There's two sides to this equation. We're the consumers. Whether it's a piece of foam or an electronic part or anything else for our copters, even an unbalanced blade, if it doesn't work from the point that we open the box and put it on and work as advertised, and even if you offer to take it back, that's our valuable time that you're taking up. If you want to be here for the long haul, and I'm not saying Peter out because he's really trying his best on this. This is intentional to all, all uh, vendors and, and all people who are really trying to get in this business. Don't grow too fast. Take your time. Be selective in the products you sell us and check them. Do a spot check inventory to make sure the people you're buying them from are delivering them as promised. That's my editorial. For videos by Andy.com, I'm the Gadget Guru Andy Parr, and I'll see you online and in the air next time in the Rocky Mountains. Crossing my fingers on that one.